the next talk is by um, Jan Sun. Um, and um, uh, sorry. Uh, and Dr. Sun is Associate Professor of Ophthalmology at Stanford and a glaucoma specialist. He will present on glaucomatous optic neuropathy and its relevance to optic nerve drusen. Great, thank you so much, Taliana. Thank you. It's good to see you again. I saw you last week, so it's great to have you. Hi. Um, I'd like to, uh, uh, can, you, can you see my slides? Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm a clinician uh, in glaucoma. Hi, Dr. Sun, they're um, not sure. You share. cannot yet see your slides. Uh, could you share your talk, please? Great. Is that better? Much better. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So um, thank you, Tatiana, for uh, introducing me. Uh, I'm a glaucoma specialist at Stanford. Um, I take care of patients, and I see uh, uh, patients with glaucoma, but also uh, ODD. So i like to uh, present today on uh, the overlap between glaucoma and uh, its relevance to uh, ODD. Here are my funding sources. Um, primarily, I'm not gonna be talking about the research that's currently going because uh, uh, we are getting close to uh, uh, publication. So we wanted to make sure that we have uh, uh, a solid story. Um, but uh, on today's talk, I will be talking about the risk uh, factors for glaucoma optic neuropathy and uh, the basis for visual field loss. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with a patient that I saw uh, two weeks ago. Uh, this is a patient who uh, presented uh, a Caucasian male, 62-year-old, who presented with uh, uh, vision loss. He complained of uh, a vision loss that was uh, 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 in the right eye um, for several weeks. Uh, and he describes it as a oblique loss of superior half of his right eye vision. And uh, his vision uh, actually was pretty good, 2040, and uh, uh, left eye was 2020. His pressures were just mildly elevated, but if you look at his optic nerves, uh, really um, obvious uh, optic nerve drusens. And so, uh, and his OCT also supports the diagnosis of, uh, uh, well, it sh shows that there's a significant loss of RNFL, uh, and uh, uh, which is also reflected by the uh, uh, macula GCA analysis. And you can see that basically he has loss of inferior bundles uh, and the left eye in particular respects the midline. Uh, and so, so this pic picture uh, with a clinical history uh, is consistent. So, so in my mind, there was a question of whether it was uh, uh, AION or glaucoma. Um, so, so let's talk about glaucoma. Uh, so glaucoma dystopian neuropathy is a, uh, a characteristic a, a, a disease with optic nerve head changes and nerve fiber layer uh, loss. And usually this is the picture that's uh, uh, initially presented by uh, Dr. Uh, Robert uh, Weinreb. And he, he had uh, elegantly stated that the glaucoma progression can be thought as uh, a, a, pre, a undetected disease state in the beginning when the ganglion cells are sick, and then it progresses with uh, uh, some uh, detectable changes in the asymptomatic stage. Uh, but there's measurable change. And then and the followed by sometimes uh, you can see the functional loss that patients will uh, start to have problems. And ultimately uh, this is uh, uh, manifested uh, with uh, severe vision loss and ultimately can lead to uh, uh, blindness. So, so glaucoma uh, is a progressive disease of the optic nerve and also has a very characteristic optic nerve head changes. And usually we see these as increased optic nerve cupping and uh, thinning of the disc rim. Uh, sometimes we see disc hemorrhages as illustrated here in the arrow. Um, and there is uh, uh, asymmetry, frequently asymmetry in this disease. There's uh, uh, one eye worse than the other, but uh, they often uh, do catch up to each other. So the visual field loss can be quite variable in glaucoma. Um, and, but the, the key is that it has to be progressive. Uh, and uh, um, and reproducible. So so on a day, a day to months variable, uh, if you retest the area of scotoma, uh, there's often areas that you should be able to uh, pick up. So in this particular uh, example on the bottom, it's very good illustration that even though you can have uh, on uh, a same main deviation of loss, but they actually have uh, a very different uh, ganglion cells involved and uh, 
uh, and there's a superior arcuate de defects versus a, a split a central fixation loss. Uh, the, the latter certainly has probably more ganglion cell loss, but uh, um, in terms of the mean deviation calculation, how much vision is affected, it's, uh, it can be uh, thought as, as to, be, to be similar. And the other aspect of a glaucoma is that we, we, we usually uh, have to exclude all other causes, including um, ischemic, ischemic event or, uh, or masses in the, uh, that's causing the uh, optic neuropathy. So in terms of um, uh, what uh, causes optic neuropathy in glaucoma, this is actually an area that's been really well studied for, well, we still don't, we have a lot of debate in this area still, but there's a, a really a host of factors that's been implicated. Primarily is the aging. If I look at my clinic uh, the, uh, in the waiting area to see my patients who's uh, uh, waiting to see me, uh, the aging uh, uh, is definitely of advanced age. So, so the average age sometimes can be 70 to, to you know, 90s. So we have patients who are 99 years old. Uh, and, uh, but in the younger folks who have uh, glaucoma, and usually there's more of a hereditary uh, uh, influence, uh, parents or, um, or siblings who are affected by glaucoma. And uh, uh, myopia is another big one. So patients who have uh, significant myopia and tilted optic disc, uh, can, uh, they're often uh, can have uh, optic neuropathies. So the, the main, the, the elephant in the room is intraocular pressure. Intraocular pressure is the, the one factor that is modifiable. So if you look at this list of uh, blood flow or uh, oxy oxidative stress, um, uh, low CSF pressures, uh, but, but for all of the factors that's been associated with glaucoma, the only one that we can change is uh, intraocular pressure. So, so let's talk about how does the changes in intraocular pressure may reflect uh, uh, a, a progression in, um, in glaucoma disease. So uh, it, it, in this morning, we have already heard uh, uh, quite a bit of talks on the uh, role of ganglion cells in, um, in, in transmission of uh, uh, visual signals. And uh, what, it, what I like to uh, present here is the idea that uh, there is um, uh, air, uh, a concept of redundancy that's built into to the system. So in the, on the top, there's a uh, set of like, uh, say nine visual uh, RGCs are covering one particular area in the, um, uh, in, in, in the uh, visual field. And you can have, certainly in the early conditions, you have very little vision uh, RGC loss, say 30% of vision uh, RGC loss that doesn't actually get reflected in the visual field test. When you actually look at the structure, there's also very little change that can be uh, detected. So, but in the uh, moderate stage of glaucoma, you can have say 60% of loss that can be manifested with OCT imaging uh, a, a decrease uh, of RNFL and uh, a macular GC analysis. And uh, you do a peripheral visual field test, you can see perhaps an inferior nasal step. And in this patients, you already have significant RGC uh, 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 loss. So this is true for glaucoma. This is true probably also for, for other forms of uh, optic neuropathies. And, but the important thing is that in the advanced diseases where you have like say 90% of, of, uh, of ganglion cell loss, now, now you went from nine ganglion cells covering one uh, particular uh, 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 lo location in the field uh, and now only down to one, and in that particular uh, setting, you can see significant thinning of uh, neural fiber rim, uh, a loss of ganglion cells uh, uh, complex by um, our OCT imaging, and the visual field may show now a dramatic decrease in peripheral uh, vision, and sometimes can even be uh, uh, encroaching uh, central vision. So, so this is a uh, idea that uh, I wanted to also uh, uh, talk about with the stru structure and function relationship in uh, glaucoma. So there's um, uh, on the x-axis is, uh, um, uh, if you look at it as progression with time on the y, you can see the structure and uh, plotted in blue and the, the function plotted in red. Sometimes you can have a uh, change in, in visual field function that can perceive the uh, uh, actual uh, neuronal loss. Uh, so the neurons are actually not uh, uh, they're only a little bit, they're only uh, uh, hypo-functioning, but they're not uh, uh, dead yet. Uh, so, so there's still 
a range, uh, there's a particular uh, time frame that we can probably intervene and to uh, uh, prevent the ganglion cells from dying. And so this is uh, uh, illustrated here that this uh, narrow to the re recoverable function. So in patients who have say stunted uh, RGC function, you can uh, lower intraocular pressure and uh, uh, that can uh, some, sometimes bring back uh, visual field uh, function. So, so we know that from trauma patients who have, say for instance, they have a blunt trauma in the eye, the pressure went up to 50, uh, and then uh, we uh, they have some loss of vision, but we can lower the pressure uh, dramatically and uh, we can get sometimes vision back. So this is the uh, idea that the RGCs, the structure and the function, there is a definitely a correlation, but exactly the uh, temporal delay or the uh, what the relationship is is affected by many factors. So the one that we, we typically think about is uh, intraocular uh, pressure. So um, what is the relationship between glaucoma and ODD? So this is a topic that's uh, been only been published by a, a few groups. Uh, if you look into the history of uh, ophthalmic literature. Uh, one of the papers that was uh, early published by uh, John Samples uh, in 1985 uh, showed uh, uh, so five patients who had uh, pigmentary glaucoma and they also uh, had uh, ODD. And so pigment dis uh, dispersion glaucoma is a uh, subtype of uh, glaucoma where they have iris pigment that's rubbing off on the lens onules. And in the picture here, you can see a really beautiful translamination defect that we see and as usual, uh, a diagnostic for pigment dispersion. A patient can have uh, cucumber spindles on the back of the cornea, and, uh, 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 and sometimes you can see uh, TM pigmentation that can be increased in the more affected eye. So certainly that was a very interesting link for uh, glaucoma and ODD that was first uh, published in 1980s. And then uh, in uh, 2000s, uh, mm -hmm. Bob Rich's group in New York had looked at uh, a number of patients who had uh, uh, ocular hypertension and glaucoma suspects. So they may or may not have glaucoma yet and, or their pressures are normal and they have uh, uh, evidence of uh, ODD. And if you look at this, they, they graded them into three different categories of uh, uh, um, uh, very barely visible drusen, um, uh, uh, drusens that are uh, visible but uh, not elevated and then they also elevate the drusens. So, and if you look at these groups of uh, ocular hypertensive and uh, normal tensive eyes, and they were uh, increased visual field loss in the groups that were uh, ocular hypertensives. So, so this is a, a um, this is the largest group that's been uh, studied to date. And uh, uh, so, I wanted to uh, now talk about what do I tell the patient that was sitting in my chair um, who has optic nerve drusen and a progressive uh, field loss. So um, we, we, we uh, uh, so a lot, a lot of the consideration has to do with also the timing of progression. Um, how fast does a, a uh, progression of visual field loss occur in uh, patients who have ODD? Uh, whether is it a vascular component or AION that's causing the vision loss or is it glaucoma that's, uh, uh, causing the visual loss. So in this particular patient that I presented earlier, his pressure was elevated uh, and uh, uh, there was definitely evidence of drusen uh, on B scan. And so I, uh, uh, I recommended that we uh, treat him uh, with a, 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 a latanoprost to lower the, his eye pressure. And uh, uh, we will follow to see whether the visual field uh, changes are going to progress. And uh, uh, the other things that I do mention for patients who have uh, normal pressures or the pressures are say already uh, in low teens and uh, uh, they still have some uh, possible progression. I usually will recommend they consider uh, vitamin B3. There's been a series uh, first out of Simon John's group in Columbia uh, that uh, advocate the use of vitamin B3 in glaucoma. Uh, uh, bromonidine as uh, uh, many of us in glaucoma field has known that bromonidine there's a, a, a Believe that it has a, some neuroprotective role in addition to its IOP lowering uh, effect. And also um, something that uh, experimental that we have been involved in is a clinical trial with com complement inhibition here. Um, we have performed a, a clinical trial and that is uh, uh, being uh, published. So um, it's something that uh, certainly we can consider. So 
Um, I, I, I've been tasked to talk about the, what protects the axons. And so um, this is another really uh, a good patient that, that I think illustrate a point um, for me. I saw on Friday who, uh, uh, so does lowering intraocular pressure help to save axons? So this is a really important question. I think it, a lot of people uh, who are in the field uh, are optic neuropathy experts who believe that, uh, you know, um, the main disease problem in glaucoma is optic nerve head and intraocular pressure has nothing to do uh, with um, uh, preservation of, uh, uh, of optic nerve axons. So, so here's a patient that I saw last week, a 60 year old gentleman uh, who had been diagnosed with glaucoma uh, in 2007 and who uh, presented with hand motion vision already due to glaucoma, uh, glaucoma optic neuropathy, uh, 2020 in the other eye. And uh, here's the optic nerves. And you can see that basically, you know, characteristic cupping with uh, um, a bearing of the uh, optic nerve uh, 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 nasalization vessels and really classic glaucoma picture. It was a hand motion LP uh, on the right eye. So we're going to ignore the right and look at the left eye. You can see that his left eye uh, with uh, um, optic nerve uh, really just uh, RNL fell super thin. There's really, really very little tissue left. And if you perform, if you look at his visual field tests, in the first times when he first presented, so hand motion in one eye and just a temporal uh, island in the other eye uh, with pressures that were just uh, a little bit elevated. Um, uh, actually, you know, he was in the 20s initially. So he had a trab done um, that reduced the pressure uh, down to the, uh, um, in the fives, in the five to 10 range. And that, a decrease a significantly slow the disease progression. So it's such that over the next uh, 13 years, the visual field essentially did not get much worse. So, so uh, his right eye has in-stage glaucoma with LP vision now, and uh, the left eye uh, with pressure that are in the five to 10 range, five to nine range, and uh, uh, has basically the temporal island has failed, has stopped from getting worse. So what is the conclusion for this? So that, that patient did not have ODD and uh, um, uh, it was just uh, uh, glaucoma by itself, but uh, it illustrates to me that for uh, intraocular pressure is, um, a, if we can lower the intraocular pressure, you will have a protective effect on the axons in, uh, in, in human patients. So, um, What's my conclusion? I will recommend lowering intraocular pressure with patients with ODD and demonstrated glaucoma progression, uh, or if they have ocular hypertension. And I would re also recommend uh, more frequent testing for patients with this to, to see whether we have uh, any uh, changeable or any detectable uh, uh, signs of, uh, of glaucoma or uh, progressive uh, vascular uh, damage. Um, I don't have a, a much time to talk about my laboratory research, but this is the, the group that, that we have here. Uh, I hope in the next time I have a chance to present that work. Thank you. Uh, given the timing, 